Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Shooter, and today I'm going to give you a preview of what we're going to create, as well as describing every single part of it, and we're going to create that cinematic Hollywood-esque slow motion with, with all the post-processing effects, the slow-mo of the sounds, the screen, everything we'll talk about, physics, and everything that you need to know. So we will go into creating the slow motion with a key press and a timer. We'll look at adding an audio source for a background audio and being able to slow this down when it happens. We'll also look at mixers and sound mixers when you have groups of sounds which use mixers. It's a different way to access it than audio sources. And then we'll look at adding post-processing. And in my example, I've used chromatic aberration or black and white, or you can combine the two, even some vignette, whatever works for your game. And then adding in some whoosh sound effects. So when you enter and exit, as great feedback for the player to know what's coming. Coming. And I'll also show you how to reverse audio using Unity's built-in audio source and time samples, which you can do that by reversing audio manually by add, bringing in another reversed audio clip, but I'll show you how to do it all in Unity. This entire project and all the scripts will be up on my Patreon. You'll be able to get it there along with over 205 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. I'm using the Aurora FPS engine, which comes with the loads of mechanics in this, but I'm going to show you how to, you can modify your own systems or other systems to be able to use it. So I'm going to create my own game objects. So I'm going to create one for slow motion effects. So you can right click, create empty, and I'm just going to add a component, add a new script and just call this slow motion effects. And I'm going to create that new script. So I'm going to start with a header for the slow motion parameters. We're going to have two fields, which are a private float for the slowdown factor and the slow motion duration. And the slow motion factor can be like halfway, 0.5, and then the duration could be four seconds. You can change this in the inspector. Then we're going to create a just a key code with the old input system just to make sure that we can control when this will happen. So I'll call this the set as key code slow motion key equals to key code dot maybe E in my case here. Then we're going to create a quick update method to control this and then we'll say that if input dot get key down is the slow motion key then if it ends those brackets we'll just put in here and and I want a field to be able to say when slow motion is active or not I'm just going to write private all slow motion active equals false by default and then I'm going to say that if slow motion is active is false so slow motion active if you put the next exclamation mark on we know that we're not currently in it, so then we can start it again. So in this case, I might want to do a coroutine because I want to activate the effects after time. I want to disable it and then start it again. I'm going to create a new method for that option, enumerator. That's one for the slow motion effect here. And we'll write in here that the slow motion active is equal to true because we know it is, so we won't be able to do the input again to make it happen. We're going to actually do the slowdown now. So we'll do time dot time scale is equal to the slowdown factor. So whatever time scale is will be equal to what time passes. So if we have a 0.5, it'll be half the speed of the normal time to make it look like the effect that's happening because it affects all animators and components in Unity. Now, physics are handled differently. So we need to say time dot fixed delta time. As you can see, when you highlight over it, it's the fixed interval in seconds that physics will be calculated and physics will be done in real time unless we do this. So then we'll set it equal to time dot time scale times by 0.02f, which is the normal time 0.02f is the normal time that physics calculations are updated. We can then write yield, return, wait for seconds, and then we can say in brackets the slow motion duration. And then in our case, we can copy the lines that we had above, paste them below, and then we can say that the time scale is then equal to, you could set a variable to the normal time scale, but I'm just going to set that equal to one because that's normal time. And then we'll do the same again, which is exactly the same bit of code to make sure that we set the physics calculations of time scale back. And then last but not least, we need to make sure that we can actually do the slow motion again. So we'll make sure it's false. So then we can actually press the button. And then in our start core routine, we'll add our our slow motion effect and make sure we add the two brackets to make sure that it is a method that we can use. Now, when this has been added, it's in our scene. Now you can see that the slow motion factor is 0.5. It lasts for four seconds and then it'll happen when we press E. You can see everything's running at normal time. Like you can see the smoke. Now, if I put it into slow motion and then we shoot at the characters that are in here, you can see it fully works as we intended. Now we may well want to add background audio. So I've just created a new empty game object 
and I'm just going to add a new component and it's called audio source. So then I'm just going to add a sound, which is my dramatic FPS sound effect that I've got here. I'm going to play it on wake and set it as a loop. And you can see that we've got a pitch here. Pitch is normally at one. If we reduce the pitch value between naught and one, the closer we get to zero, the actual slower the sound seems to feel in our game. So we can go back to our script now. And then I'm going to add a slow motion background header and set a boolean for slow the background audio if we want to set that to true or false. And then I'm just going to make a reference to the background audio source so we can add that if we want to use it and specifically affect the audio source itself. So I'm going to create a new method to be able to control what value the pitch should be at any time of the background audio. So I'm going to say void set background audio. I'm going to put a parameter in the brackets and have a float of a value that we're going to give it. And then we'll say that if slow background audio is true at any point, we want to make sure that we say if we want to activate it or not, we can say that background audio source dot pitch is equal to the value that we've set just so that we control this nice and easy. Now what we can do is below here, below when our actual time starts, we can say set background audio. And then we can open up the brackets and say that we want to do a some sort of slowdown factor. So if we go back to the top and I'm going to write a float audio slowdown factor of also to 0.5 F. So we can copy that field and then paste that into there. So now we can set the method and we're setting the value of that method. And then when we come to exit, we also need to set it back so we can just copy that line again and instead we can put one in this brackets this time just to say that we're going to set it back to its original pitch and again you could create fields for this if you really want so if we go to our slow motion effects and you can see that we're looking for an audio source so we can add that in there we'll say we want to slow the background audio we've added it in and now we'll press play and you should be able to hear it in the background Now I'm going to show you how to affect because the bullets wouldn't be affected by the audio source. That's just a background audio. Now you can see here that this actual FPS system uses an audio mixer with groups which have FX music UI. And this is just another way to control groups of audio effects. Now I will give you the example that say we select this sound effects because these are when the bullets happen. I want them to be slowed down on this side for the sound effects. You can see pitch is already exposed. If it isn't, it will be classed as just looking like that. If you right click it and click and choose expose pitch to script, it have a little arrow on it. Then when we click back on the sound effects in the top corner here, it will have my exposed parameter, which will say the pitch of sound effects. So we could double click that and we're going to name this to SFX pitch. That's what we're going to hard reference in the code. Now I'm going to create a private audio mixer to this sound effects mixer that we want to be able to set. Now, similarly with the background audio, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that method and then paste below something new. So we're going to change this to set sound effects mixer and then we're just going to have float value and then instead of having this here we could have another boolean check if we really wanted but in this case i'm going to set the sound effects mixer dot set float open up brackets we need to specify the exact name of the sound effects that we wanted now in my example i'd actually created for myself that'll be on patreon i've actually set the adjustments to the master because it will affect music ui and everything in between and that is just called master pitch but you can use sfx pitch whatever things are exposed but in this case i'll just use master pitch for sake of changing every audio that's grouped together so i'm just going to write master pitch and then have a comma of the value that we're going to set it to. So it's very similar to using an audio source, but you need to make sure that that variable or that parameter is exposed. Then when we back up here, we can actually do like we did before, and then we can set the sound effect mixer, and then we can say that there's audio slowdown factor. You could create another field if you wanted these to be different, but again, we can just copy this line, paste it below, and just copy the one F in there so we set it back to the normal mixer pitch. 
So before we get started, we can go to the sound effects and we go do and select the mixer that we want. So it's the main audio mixer in this case. And I do have a full tutorial explaining sounds, audio mixers, how to program audio mixers and everything like that if you don't know how these work. And now from here, we might want to actually be able to adjust post-processing or a way to get post-processing to work so we can create that chromatic aberration effect or something else. Now, I've got a game object here, which is just called a post-processing volume. Now, if you need to install the post-processing, you can go to the package manager by going window package manager, searching by unity registry from the dropdown and making sure that you type in post-processing to install post-processing in your project. I do have full tutorials on post-processing too. When you've got the volume, you need to create yourself a new profile, which you can just hit new if you don't already have one. Set this as global, and I've just got a bunch of different effects. Now, if you want to add new effects, you can click add effect and the effects down here. I've got chromatic aberration here. So when I activate it, you can see the bottom of the, or the edges of my screen become distorted with that effect of like a lens on the side. And you make sure that you enable the intensity because you can see if I enable the intensity, you can see it distort along the edge. So I've got the intensity quite high and I'm leaving the intensity enabled I'm turning the entire effect off because I don't want to use it quite yet. Now I've got a different one, which is called color grading. Now color grading just changes the overall color saturations and everything of your scene. Now I've got everything set up by default. Now in this case, I've got saturation enabled. That's currently at zero because I didn't change the saturation. Now I could have an effect where we go black and white when we use the slow motion. As my two examples, I use chromatic aberration and the saturation to create a black and white effect like you see in a lot of games. Now I'm going to keep this at zero, but make sure that I keep color grading and the saturation enabled, but just keep it set to zero. Then we're going to add something to our script to make this happen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a slow motion post-processing header, have two booleans to show the grayscale or show the chromatic aberration, set those to false. It's just so that we can show one or show both. It depends what's suitable for your game. And we're going to make a reference to the post-processing volume. And I'm just going to call this lowercase post process volume because we need to access that volume. I'm going to create two private fields, one to the chromatic aberration and one to the color grading and just give those names. I've got chromatic aberration effect and color grading effect. Now, to be able to access these, we need to access these in a start method. And if we're doing that, we need to say that if post process a volume of what we just created dot profile dot try get settings, and then we'll open up the brackets because then we're going to say out chromatic aberration. And then I'm just going to call this chromatic for short for this effect. And then in my brackets below, I'm going to say that the chromatic ab effect is equal to the chromatic, which we just referenced here. This is to find the profile that we need just so that we can access it and use it. And we can do a very, very similar thing to our color grading. So I'll set that if profile dot try get settings out color grading, then I'm just calling it grading for short. And then the color grading effect, which was the field, will set that equal to grading. Now we've got those effects found, we need to actually make sure that we can toggle that post-processing effect. We're going to write a method called toggle post-processing effects, have those. So we'll say that if the chromatic aberration effect is not equal to null, so we make sure that it exists and show chromatic is true because we want to make sure that only when we take that boolean, because sometimes you might not want to show it. We'll say that our chromatic aberration effect dot active is equal to the opposite of chromatic aberration dot active. And then if we want to control the color grading, we'll do a very similar thing and say if color grading effect is not equal to null and we can, or we want to show the grayscale, we can write our color grading effect dot saturation dot value is equal to the color grading effect dot saturation dot value is not equal to minus 100 question mark minus 100 colon zero. So in this case, if the value is not equal to minus 100, it will do the opposite, set it to zero and vice versa. It's just so we can control it without specifying. So now in our show slow motion effects, we can just write a reference to our method, which is toggle post processing effects. So whichever's on, it will just toggle them on and off. And then we can put that same method in at the end after everything else is finished. And so it'll just toggle them on and off when we choose to. 
So before we get started, we can go back to the slow motion effects object that I'm just going to show the chromatic aberration. And I'm going to make sure that I add the post processing volume here by dragging it straight in. And now similarly, if I show the black and white when we do the slow motion, instead of the chromatic aberration, if you want that sort of effect. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you is how to add a whoosh sound effect. So when you enter it and exit it, it's nice that the player can hear it and you can get a reversed audio as well, which I'll show you how to do too. So I'm just going to go to my post-processing effects and I'm just going to add a new audio source to this one because that's what I'm going to use. So then I'm going to add my slow motion whoosh which I'll put in the edit of this video, actually, just so you can hear it. I'm just going to add it to that source there. And I'm going to make sure that it's not on play or work, not on loop. And I'm just going to keep everything just by default. Going to go back into the script and I'm just going to add a new audio source, which is my whoosh audio source, because I've got a great name for it. So what I'm going to do below my method about my audio mixer, I'm just going to say avoid. I'll say whoosh sound and then I'll have bool as slow in the, just so that I know when I can put it in our the reversed version so that I'll say that if slow in is true we'll say that the whoosh audio source dot pitch is equal to in my case I might want 1.5 because I don't want it exactly the same speed I want it to be a bit sped up when I do this so when I go in it you can put that at two three and you can make it much faster but in this case, we're going to use something called time samples, which takes all the samples of the audio and being and puts them in different places so that we can do things with it. But in my case, we don't need to do anything with it yet. We can just grab that whoosh audio source and say dot time samples and just set that equal to zero from now because we don't need to use it. And then we can just say that the whoosh audio source dot play. So it'll play that sound effects that's in that source. We're going to grab exactly what we've written there. And I'm going to set the pitch to a minus because if it's in minus, it means that it would play backward. Unity's audio source doesn't by default be able to control whether you can go in reverse. But if you use time samples, then it allows you to do that. So then I won't be doing that equal to zero anymore. It's going to be equal to the audio source dot clip dot samples is minus one. So it looks at all the samples in the array and does the one before it and can do play so it can put it in a reverse sort of sound effect. So we do it at the same speed, but in reverse. Now in our method at the beginning, we can make sure that we set the whoosh sound method to true. And then at the end, we're going to set it to false. So as soon as it ends, it's going to be set to false. Do remember if you've got an audio effect and you're reversing it and say you've got some fade out at the end, it will take time for it to be played. So you might want to cut that end out if you're going to do it like this. We go back to our audio effects game object and I just add the audio source that we've added, which will be to the um, actual slow motion whoosh sound. Loads of different slow motion effects, various different examples of how to integrate this into your code, into your systems and anything that you've got. And it will all be up on my Patreon for TV to get the entire project. I'll put the link to all the videos about how to use audio mixes, audio sources, all about audio using post processing in all the different pipelines. And also I will give a link to the FPS system that I'm using here. If that interests you too, do let me know what you think in the comments because I always love to hear from you. So do be sure to check out my Patreon to get over 205 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do be sure to come and check out all the great assets that I've got in the description because there's Unity sale coming up. There's loads of bundles and there's loads of epic savings very, very close for us all. And do be sure to check out my assets on the Unity store and massive savings on my website with over 20 to 30% off compared to the Unity asset store. So big thank you to all my patrons. Massive thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.